Well, thanks, Nan. Um, how can I beat that, right? Nan's such a great speaker, a great mentor, actually, too. Well, I was thinking I was going to come to Miami and get some sun. I live in Seattle. It rains all the time, and instead, I've been inside all the time. So I'm not sure when I'll see the sun. But I want to thank you for attending. This MEP is really becoming a really great, impactful organization. And what I'm going to cover in the agenda here is the opportunity ahead for MEP and really how automation is playing a critical game now throughout all of this industry. And the great work we've done in SASE and Zero Trust and exactly what are we going to do next and how are we going to take that work forward. So let me start with the market drivers. You've seen these slides before. It's nothing new. IT moving to the cloud is, is very, very traditional. Lots and lots of revenue involved. And then on top of it, you've got basically, you know, digital transformation. Every analog workflow is digitizing, generating new revenues. But the most big, biggest takeaway is that enterprise want change and they want speed from their providers. And really at MEF, our role and goal at this point is really to enable this. And one of the things we have to think about is how do we create an open ecosystem that everybody wins? You know, our communication providers is the heart of the membership, 130 plus service providers. But our technology providers are very critical. They provide tons of innovation and technology into the communication provider. MEP is creating standards and other bodies are creating standards. And then finally, the hyperscalers are going to market, sell with and sell to, to the communication providers. But everybody wants that multinational enterprise IT. They want that digital transformation. The average sale price is very high, lots of, lots of revenue in that. But don't forget, the small, medium enterprise is a huge market worldwide. And they don't buy best of breeds. They buy things they understand. And what we need to do is start bundling services in an easy to understand outcome for them. And that's really critical. So what I'm going to cover here is exactly what I think is the opportunity ahead for us as we bring this ecosystem together in an open environment. And really, we got to start moving from an us and them mentality to a we mentality. It's not really us and them anymore. And enterprises on their digital transformation journey doesn't care about us and them. They care about how fast can you help them move on that transformational journey? And it's up to us to really enable that from the communication side and make that very fast and to change with that environment. And we got to embrace this we philosophy. So number one, I want to talk about what's really happening is basically the, with the edge coming in so fast, You've got this access layer that in, in the past was, you know, all this IP VPNs and so on. But now the internet is becoming the access layer. And you're getting high speed pipes to the internet. And one hop away, you're going to hit the edge. And at that edge is where our communication providers provide tremendous value because they create on that bump on the wire instead of just being a, a bandwidth pipe, the ability to create all kinds of great services like we're seeing not only under will underlay connectivity to anywhere on the planet, but all that overlay the SD-WANs enable with application performance guarantees. And then cybersecurity is now top of mind everywhere. And then multi-cloud to get to all these cloud destinations. And these clouds are not in the regions anymore. They're coming to the cities, to the edges. So it's, it's hybrid, it's multi and distributed clouds all living together. A tremendous opportunity where all of these cloud providers really need the communication providers and everybody to collaborate together, deliver what the industry is now calling network as a service. And this new network as a service is not the old network as a service, which was about just bandwidth and elasticity of bandwidth and site to site VPNs, the data centers. This is about really, you know, a new world of as a service that's cloud oriented. It's elastic. It's automation is critically part of this and has to be part of this. And then finally, security is blended with networks. There's no more the idea of networks and security. It's all merged together, bundled together. And I think that's really the essence where all of this starts to really make a difference of what network as a service today and where it's moving to, to what it was you know, a decade ago, which really didn't take off. 
And Meth, I like to say, we talked to the board today, and we talked to the tab, and we agreed that we can take all of our work, all of your hard work, for the last seven or six plus years I've been the CTO and all the decades before, and bundle it into a much, much more cohesive package that the enterprises will understand and will be able to buy. And this bundling is all of the MEF services and automation in, as a service model, whether it be consumption or subscription or usage, we still don't know. And it really is a combination of underlays, overlays, cybersecurity, and multi-clouds. And I'll go into the details of this in more, in, in more slides. And really, it's the idea that no more do they actually have to own the hardware and all the upgrades. They really look to the service like a utility, like we buy water, or we buy electricity. We don't worry about how it's manufactured, where we get it. We buy it, we consume it, and we expect the water to be clean of pathogens and to flow right and so on. So I think that's the expectations from many of the enterprises as they look at as a service. And we're calling it Secure Network as a Service for Enterprise, snazzy. Somehow the E got dropped off the slide deck, but anyways. Um, and that will probably get rebranded to something else. We're hoping Lisa and the marketing team will figure out what the market really wants. So this is kind of what the new slide looks like. We used to saw the other one with the better ecosystem together. It had all this technical stuff. But in reality, what we're describing is really automation facing the enterprise. So it's got that cloud-like experience, whether it be APIs or portals. It really doesn't matter. It depends on the enterprise, how they want to consume it. But they, as you go downstream in the market, those enterprise wants outcomes. They want to understand outcomes, simple to understand behavioral outcomes. And the idea that we can brand it as just, you know, connect anywhere, you know, and application assured and always secure and multi-cloud are four main themes that the secure network as a service will represent. And then on the right side, it represents the ecosystem that delivers that in real time through automation. And I'll cover this in much more details. And what we've been doing with our APIs is really enabling this vision. And while we've known it or not, we've been doing this for six plus years, enabling this kind of environment anyways. And now the whole industry is trying to describe it. And we now at MEF think we can package all our work into a blueprint. I mean, there's nothing new on this slide that we have not been doing with all the committees and all of your hard work and from the board and, and the staff and the contractors. And it really enables us to create this blueprint that all of our providers can use, just like open source enables you know, innovation, rapid innovation. Why start from scratch? Why not take a blueprint to create the network as a service? And in detail, this is kind of the more details of that blueprint. You see the four themes connect anywhere. Well, we've already done carry Ethernet for decades. We've got internet thanks to all the hard work. Our internet's really come along and now standardized and we pay loads for our Sonata for internet. Layer one connectivity services done includes the ability to stay wavelengths, whether we describe it or not. We can easily add in fiber now with our payload extended MEF endorsed schemas, uh, which I won't get into, but extending schemas beyond what MEF does. We talked about at the board, is there opportunity for fixed wireless to access 5G? Can, can we buy and sell you know, fixed wireless access 5G through our automation across that ecosystem? That is TBD. We're not unsure. We're unsure. We want to get other input. And whether we'll take on the items is unsure, but I think there's opportunity there. There was talk about private wireless, private 5G is taking off and all kinds of initiatives, private, you know, managing the, private, the wireless infrastructure is an opportunity. We don't do anything there, but these are all potential that we can maybe take on under this blueprint. We are certainly doing uh, this application assured where we're already doing SD-WAN in so many projects. We got slicing well underway, slicing profile, it'll continue to evolve. We just got the standardization for SAS and zero trust so that always secures there. We really need to think about how do we get to XDR, MDR, managed detection response. Do we partner? Do we try to do something here with our APIs and our work and all of our great talent here, TBD? And then multi-cloud, I'm going to cover in detail. We've been doing this, this work around you know, IAS, edge compute. But really, you got to think of multi-cloud more than just edge and regional hyperscalers. And I'm going to cover this in detail. But all of this is wrapped around our automation, our fabulous automation work, which I'll cover in the next section, and then basically our test and certification. So there's some examples of bundling. I won't have time, given the limited time I have um, to do. But basically, 
think of that our members can take our blueprint and bundle how they want to bundle. And I give you three examples of bundle. Very simple one, site to multi-cloud. Another one, security and cloud networking. And then the final one has to do with digital transformation, IoT, and edge computing. And all of these represents different parts of our work. And certification and automation is critical to all of this. And this bundling, how they want to bundle and how they want to label and how they want to brand is up to the providers. How they want to create an easy button on this is up to the providers. But MEF can provide the blueprint and start starting over. They can provide the blueprint. So this is really critical. And I'll cover now this one part of multi-cloud, which I think, you know, the other three areas we've been doing, but this is a tremendous opportunity for us. And we have to be thinking now multi-cloud in a way that maybe most of you have been thinking about, it, but it's new for me to finally get my head around this. So while we've been thinking about providers accessing loops all over the world, you know, Ethernet to start with, now internet is becoming very common to get internet DIA or broadband for SD-WAN overlays and SASE. But now the idea is, can I connect the technology provider cloud instead of taking their bits and bringing my pop and training my people and revving those bits and keeping up to date, can I instead horizontally integrate through these APIs, which I'll show you, the Sonata, well, the LSO APIs, can I horizontally integrate to a cloud like a Cisco umbrella cloud or a Versa Titan cloud or you know, a Fortinet cloud or, or a VM cloud or any of these clouds that really operate all of the cybersecurity bits and the operational capabilities and yet you know, basically white label it back to the service provider to do all of the healing and the, and the sales and, and the support and so on. This is a, what I call horizontal integration and really, it's a great opportunity where the market, I believe, is going. And Zscaler has proven out to be one of the cloud providers that actually is doing this. And automation plays a very critical role in tying back to the service provider as part of the ecosystem. Extending that and taking our APIs to say, can I extend that to security operational centers, emergency response teams? Can I actually go to data centers and buy power and space? Can I get edge computing from them? You know, and so on. And finally, we know hyperscalers are critical. Everybody wants to connect to some hyperscaler in some way for SaaS clouds, PaaS clouds, and so on. And so all of this is clouds. And the world is all about getting to clouds. And really, we have to think, how does our APIs fit into this cloud journey? And I'm going to show you this in this section of, of the presentation. I'm going to talk about what we've been doing in automation, why our automation has become really powerful and tremendous adoption. When I came six plus years ago, I remember talking to members and they were saying, automations are nice to have. I, I people, they're cheap enough, especially in parts of the world that I can just get them to put scripts in. They do a really good job, I don't need automation. Now, automation's a must have. There's not a single provider that says, ah, uh, it's a nice to have. It's a must have everywhere. Everyone wants that cloud-like experience and that's kind of really what we're talking about. And What's been happening in the automation game, if it's being automated through any kind of process of APIs or webs front end, we're seeing this idea of proprietary APIs everywhere. And this is causing massive end scale explosion that causes massive, massive integration complexities. And it really stops the ability to have great scale and service velocity because every time the IT department has to re redo API for another partner, and that's not the name of the game. What MES has been doing is, how do you invest once and deploy anywhere? This is really hard of what Kubernetes and containers did, is you build once and you deploy anywhere. The idea, can you, how we can invest in your APIs once and deploy them in any kind of these scenarios I just described. And really, at the end of the day, it allows us to have really, really scalable revenue with any partner that we want to choose with and not have to reinvent to their APIs every time and plug in. So I'm going to give even an example here. So our MEF55 lifecycle framework has really served as the, the, the holy grail for how we frame ourselves. And from the six years I've been here, it still holds true. And we've been focusing mainly on the east-west direction facing the enterprise and especially between the providers and not going down the stack. And, you know, there are a lot of 
PMFORM does a great job of going down north-south because providers can agree on what they want to customize. And I'm going to explain that in a second. But what we've been focusing on is the east-west direction, and that's served us well. Because if you look at what TMFORM has done, they've taken 60-plus APIs, and people can integrate the north-south direction any way they want. But the TMFORM APIs are really good APIs, but they're designed to be generic. Every provider has to customize them. And by customizing them, you've created proprietary APIs. I'm going to give you an example. And on top of it, TMFORM does not tell you how to put the service or product on top. What MEF has done is taken all the great work TMFORM has done and added on to and built on it tremendous assets and value. And now we're seeing great adoption and great awareness in the industry because of the value we've created. So let me give you an example of just one API from TMFORM of the islands and proprietary it creates. Take the order API 622, which we built our MEF order API out of 622, and we modified it to make sure we all agreed it from the industry-wide how to customize it. But however, if we didn't do that, we'd have service provider A interpret TMFORM 622, create all the downstream partners to snap to it. Service provider 2B would do the same thing, and same with C, and same with D, and same with E, and same with F, and we'd have islands and islands of the same API 622 all configured and customized differently. And additionally, if some partner from A, as you see in that data line, suddenly has to connect to server by B, C, D, E, and F, they have to modify each of their APIs for that order to match providers B, C, D, and F retail side. So this is a spaghetti mess that's been going on in the industry and continues. And I'm just giving you TNF forum. This, there's a lot of proprietary APIs doing the same thing. This is the problem, the confusion that's causing the ability to not be cloud-like in agility and speed because of all of this proprietariness that's going on. What we've done in MEF is we've taken the TM Forum APIs and through our business use case requirement specs, which we spend years on looking at that workflow, and thanks to our LSO committees um, and the digital service committees, but basically taking that and understanding the workflow and then processing that and then modifying the TM Forum APIs to create the industry agreement of what that modified API should look like, and then taking that and adding in the product service definitions and schemas and the payloads, we call them the payloads, and then finally all these support programs we have with AI, with the OIT, the Onboard Interrupt Test Platform, the certification, the developer support community, um, the marketplace that just got launched, and, and so on. All of these assets are all built upon and really what we've done is we've taken this idea of taking an API and split it in two with the TM forum. While we've modified the TM forum API and to agreement with the industry and all of us members and all the communication providers, we've also added all these payloads and together we've now created this ability to have invent once and deploy anywhere. And this is really what we've done is taken 60 plus APIs, reduce it to the full life cycle of commercial or business, and operational. And by doing that, and you can see where we have completed them and where we're still working on them, this is the full life cycle. And I've said this many times from everything from the pre ordering to quote to ordering it to updating the inventory to all the operational aspects to then trouble ticketing and then finally building and settlement is really the heart of any transaction you do. And you can apply this, whether you're applying this to Ethernet, Internet, you can apply this to buying and, and you know, uh, SD-WAN, SASE, Zero Trust. And now you can also apply this to build your own. Let's say a provider wants to use these same APIs I described and suddenly wants to do it for voice. Can they do it yet? Can they do it for their own SASE cloud that, that extends beyond our SASE specification? Yes, our MEF endorse payloads, or they're extensible. What they mean is that you can get a playbook. You can look at that, that handbook playbook, understand how we did the rest of the, the payloads, and schemas, and you can build them and give them back to us, and we'll evaluate like the App Store and see if they're going to make sense and give you a unique resource name that you can apply up to these APIs that I just described. So basically, these APIs are high quality, high fidelity, high interoperability, and you have extensibility with all of these schemas and product and service payloads. So this gives you the combination of this invest once and you know deploy anywhere. The self-blending tool will be released in our marketplace, which takes the basically takes this payloads and these APIs, and you allow them to blend in any way you want. 
and this will be a wake up marketplace. And then this is exactly the assets we've done with TM Forum. So it's not an us and them. It's not TM Forum or MEF. It's TM Forum and MEF that's created tremendous value in the ecosystem. So I won't spend all the time, but you can see asset after asset, which I've already described, we've been building over the years to make TM Forum APIs customized by us, the industry, to have this open ecosystem to create this federation that's you know high fidelity, high interoperability, high extensibility. We've got tremendous adoption, as Nan has talked about, and we're very proud of this adoption and continues to grow. And finally, we have our blockchain project that Daniel has been spreading. And the main use case that everybody wants to get to in this blockchain is to be able to do invoicing and settlement in a very automated way versus doing auditing of transactions. And as you get to on-demand and where the transactions are changing and it's not a you know, fixed bandwidth or things like that, and it's always changing on-demand, you're gonna ha we're going to need this. We cannot be based on just a month bill anymore. Usage-based stuff, and I'm not saying for bandwidth, for other areas, will have to be done through automation or smart contracts. Our mesh showcase is an evolution of all of this. Hawks, the ability to now also bring in an always on point, a proof of concept, and it be alive that everybody can see. And we're going to be showing not only the blockchain, but all our APIs working with it, and all the, the NADs, the secure NADs, and so on. So I'm very proud of the work we've done there. So kudos to all of you. And the automation side has really taken off for us only because one philosophy invest once deploy anywhere. Plug in once, deploy anywhere. And really, at the end of the day, we've created this innovation, the base one, the platform to make this happen. So I'm really, really happy for where we are you know, on the six plus journey as a CTO here. I'm really happy to finally arrived at the spot. And all because of you. So really, at the end of the day, get involved in, in this area. You know, implement the SDKs. We're getting SDKs every six months. You know, the next SDK is going to come out in December. Get to understand what's in it. Figure out your release plans. Okay, join the Mesh Showcase. I just talked about it. The Showcase is going to be a great way of really showing off what you guys are doing in membership of all the Mesh stuff and, and beyond. And finally, you know, think about schemas that we don't have invented in the product server side. Voice is an example. Certain cloud schemas, power and space schemas. That could be all added to the APIs. And then finally, the most important thing, you know, make sure that in the RFIs and RFPs, that MEF LSA APIs are included. So that's the big ask and takeaway, how to become part of the WE philosophy. So with the last few minutes I have left here, I'd like to talk about our SD-WAN SASE Zero Trust. Super big kudos, two years plus in the making, to actually deploy the first industry standard to remove the confusion of what is SASE, what is Zero Trust, and combined with SD-WAN we've already been working on, I think it's a great work of art and, and technicality because not only did we provide all that automation in the six plus years I've been here, but we went up the stack beyond carry the beyond internet, beyond layer one connectivity, all the way up to SD-WAN, and now we're up to SASE, cybersecurity, and zero trust. I remember in 2016 talking about security and people going, security, like we're not even doing that, but look at where we are today. We're doing it. So super proud. Kudos to all of you, especially to the to the digital service committees and the SASE and Zero Trust teams, hands off to you guys. As I talked about the first standards, very, very, very good. Got to get on the second version now. We got the first one out. Got to move to the second version. I'll talk about the second. As Nan talked about, really, really good stuff. We're going to have clear language, clear definitions of what is SASE now. It's not going to be a white paper from Gartner that everybody runs and describes their own variations. So I think. Third definition is removes market confusion and will allow the market to move very fast. And then we're going to announce a third party certification that I've been spearheading with some great partners. And I think it's going to be an incredible certification that really brings a tremendous value to the enterprise. So stay tuned for that. So at the end of point, we're going to move the certification so that the value of the enterprise is going to say, not only do I conform to the MEF standards, but when I get a certification, the goal would be it really, and I get it from a provider or I get it from a vendor, I know it works. I know in the face of impairments, 
SD-WAN is going to work. I know that during threats, that SASE environment is going to hold up correctly. Okay, and so I believe that if we can move the certification, the enterprise see value in a certification, then it's going to be very, very powerful that they say, oh, that certification means something to me. It means that, like, for example, Wi-Fi. When I buy a Wi-Fi certified product, I know when I plug in anywhere, it's going to plug in and work flawlessly. It's the same thing. If they buy a MEF certification, it should describe the idea that the SD-WAN works, it classifies right, it works on impairments, that the SASE environments handle the threats, and, it, and, and so on. So that is going to be a very powerful game when we launch that, and I'm hoping to launch it you know, early next year working with uh, the partners I'm working with. So stay tuned for that. So this is my last slide. We got to go back to the we philosophy, not in automation, only in automation, not only in the snazzy stuff or the secure network as a service, but we also have to think about how can you get involved to get in the next version of fast and zero trust. We need you guys. We need the subject matter expertise. We need the service providers, the vendors, your product management team who really know this space to work with the editors, work with the committees to get involved. We really need to think about, you know, how to show this off. Get, get into the showcase. Daniel's going to launch it. Start showing the SASE in the showcase and showing how great the mesh SASE and Zero Trust um, and the SD-WAN work together to enable an open ecosystem in the we philosophy that things just work properly and remove the confusion, enable the speed, enable the ability to change to the digital transformation that the enterprise really expects from the telecommunication industry is to move fast be cloud-like and agility, and do that, you know, with a collective philosophy and stop fighting of a we and them scenario. So with that, I want to thank you, and we're going to enter with the LATAM panel.